Hi, in this short tutorial we're going to talk about using the reclassify button to do some raster data analysis. You can see we're looking at some national land cover data set. You can see the Anderson classification schemes here, 11 through 95, over in my table of contents. I've already, using the DEM, I've already created a layer that represents slope. This is called RAST Calc 5. You can see ones represent areas of low slope, zeros represent areas of higher slope. What I'm going to try to look at are areas of low slope, and I'm going to try to combine them with classifications 21, 22, 23, and 24, so we can look at areas of surface pooling in urban areas. So we can see areas where water isn't going to permeate through the sur uh, isn't going to percolate or infiltrate through the surface of the uh, the water be, uh, be through uh, impervious surfaces. So it's going to either sit there and it can't really move because of gravity because it's very low slope. And some of these areas are obviously going to be like lakes and ponds and other kind of sitting bodies of standing bodies of water. But we can see here, uh, we'll, we'll find these areas also, and we can kind of query those out later after this. Um, you can see here, I've already calculated this here. And what I'm going to use here is the reclassify tool. We can easily do this, uh, we can easily do this using the raster calculator, using a compound or statement. Or we can just use reclassify. And in my input raster, I'm going to type in, I'm going to look for my Northwest Durham Quad. That's the name of it. I'm going to look at my values. And I'm going to just start typing in my values. I like working with Boolean, uh, Boolean numbers here, zero, combining zeros and ones with other layers of zeros and ones. Because when we multiply them or add them, we can get things that are relatively easy and easy to understand, unless we're working with weighted index models. And I've got a zero here. And then I'm going to type this in one, 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 one. So anything that's 21, 22, 23, or 24 will make a value of one. Everything else will be a zero. I always like typing enter afterwards. And I'll even retype the new data right here, just so I can enter it here. Okay. And when I'm set here, I'm going to click OK. I'm just going to run it briefly. So. All I'm doing is turning that 11 into a 0, turning the 21 into a 1, the 22 into a 1, 23 into a 1. And you can see what I have here is just a layer of zeros and 1s. And it ran correctly here, where my purple represents either 21, 22, 23, or 24. And then my zeros represent anything that isn't one of those values here. So I ran this reclassify, and I basically collapsed these values from about 12 to 15 values down to 1, or down to 2 values, a 0 or a 1. From here, now I've got my ones that represent areas that I'm looking for. My, uh, my these are my developed areas. Here, these are my uh, low slope areas right here. So from here, I can basically multiply these. If I really wanted to, I could add them, but I need to figure out what these are because I want them to satisfy both. So from here, I can just do my reclass, multiply it times my raster calc here, and these are going to be when I when I multiply these two raster grids together, you're going to see the results that satisfy both of those here. Okay. And we can zoom in and see exactly what these are, and we can combine these and all this other stuff here. But the main goal of this short tutorial is to talk about the reclassify. I can also reclassify numbers here. Okay, So I can put these into different classes. So I can put, put interval or ratio number uh, numbers into different classes. So instead of looking at unique values, I can look at certain ranges, but I need to make sure those are in the correct range. I can do the same exact thing with raster calculator, but that typically returns a Boolean value. So I'll just look at this really quickly here, but my input raster might be my Durham right here, and then I have my different ranges right here. Okay, and you can see I have my different ranges, and when you type these in or you retype these in, you always need to make sure there's a space between the number and the space, and then the uh, and the dash, and the dash, and the, the following number here. Okay, so you run into some errors if you have those. But you can see I can create a number of different classes um, in ArcView GIS back with the 3.2. This operation was called Slice. I'm not really sure what it's called uh, these days in the new ArcGIS and ArcInfo here. But I can type in what I want to do here. I'm gonna, I can delete entries, add entries. Okay, but when I look at interval or ratio data or even ordinal data, you can see I can create these different classifications based on this here.